The next few lessons are going to go over Sublime Text. So basically what Sublime Text is, is a text editor, but it's a very powerful text editor that lets you view and edit data very quickly and easily. And an added bonus to that is that it allows you to install different packages that make it even easier for you to edit and deal with data. And the one that we're going to be uh, using in this course is called Pretty JSON. So I will get into more about. All right. So the first thing we have to do is download and install Sublime Text on your computer. Uh, since I'm using a Windows here, I'm going to go ahead and click the download for Windows button. Once that's done downloading, you can go ahead and open the installer and hit yes. And you're just going to take the basic installation. If you want to change the path of your install, you can do that. Uh, for me, that's fine. And then just keep on going through the prompts and install. Should only take a few seconds here. This is a very light installation. And go ahead and finish. And let's go ahead and we have Sublime here. All right, so this is Sublime text. Uh, we can take a quick walk through here. Um, you can see that Sublime uses tabs. Um, you can, uh, so what I'm doing here is just basically double clicking and getting a new tab. I'm going to close those. Uh, you can see in the file that there's tons of little shortcut keys um, to do stuff. And just kind of going through the menu, you can see a lot of the options that you can do. And we'll get into some of these options a little bit later uh, when we're editing data and then you'll see why this is a very good tool for for viewing and editing data and but at this point you have sublime installed and you can take a look look around play with it a little bit and see what it has to offer uh, but that's that's it for this video pretty JSON later uh, but right now uh, we're going to go through how to install Sublime, uh, installing the package control manager and installing uh, Pretty JSON. And if you already have a text editor or other tool that already does this, uh, you can skip over this lesson. But for those who don't, or if you want to try something new, uh, I would follow along. This set of lessons will work fine on a Mac or a Windows PC uh, since they have downloads. Uh, compatible with both uh, operating systems. All right, so now that we have Sublime Text installed, we need to install the package control. So if you jump on over to Google and then type in Sublime Package Control, and you're going to want this first option up here. So what package control is a package manager, or what it means is you can find and install stuff to Sublime to add more features or functionality uh, to it. So let's go ahead and do the browse. Um, you can see there's a lot of packages you can browse from. Um, there's quite a lot more than what you see here. So if you click on one of the one of the options here, you can see there's tons and tons of packages that people are making and putting up here. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and install package control. Um, so you're going to use the keyboard keys, uh, control shift P, or if you want to do it through the tools. So basically we want this command palette. So control shift P and this little window will open up. And if you type in install, if you don't see other options other than install package control, that means you do not have package control installed. So you can go ahead and click this. And now it says package control was successfully installed. Um, Another option to install would be to, um, if you see on the installation page of the package control IO website, 
um, you would just copy this text in this box and then you would paste that into the command window, which let me find it real fast. Show console. So this console window. So you would paste that whole thing into here and hit enter. All right. So now if I do control shift P and now you see install gives me more act options. So before it only says install package control, but now it says package control, install a package, install local dependency and install uh, advanced install package. So let's do the first one here, install package. Once you click on that, um, then it will give you the full list of all the packages that are available. So you can search, uh, scroll through here and see if you can find something that you want. Um, let's see, things that I like to do is like, you can do H and HTML snippets. Um, snippets are basically just like short, short uh, codes that you put into uh, the, the editor. And then when you hit enter or tab, then it'll automatically generate a bunch of code for you. So um, stuff in there for that. Um, you can have a uh, syntax um, so you can do like java java syntax um, a lot of that's already built in but if you want something different then you can find it in there um, let's see another thing I, I use is like a compare so you can you can compare different files side by side um, but the list kind of goes on and on and on so uh, feel free to go through here and then and pick packages that you want to install and go ahead and install them. All right. Okay, it's time to install pretty JSON. So do control shift P to open this and then uh, go ahead and hit enter or click on it. And then we're going to type in pretty and then you can see pretty JSON is the one at the top. Uh, you can see there's other variations of the pretty. Um, there's pretty Ruby, pretty YAML, and on and on and on. So we want this first one up here. Go ahead and select that, and then it's going to install. Let's see. If we go to our console, I think it'll... You can see the installation uh, status there. And I believe it's done because it doesn't look like it's doing anything anymore. So go ahead and exit out of there. So if you do control shift P now and then type in pretty, and then if you can see all these options in here, then you know that it has installed. Um, so pretty JSON has uh, different features. Uh, first one is that it can validate whether, whether the JSON in the current tab that you're working on is, is valid or not, which comes in very handy. Um, you can uh, do other things like convert JSON to XML. You can minify it. So minify means that you're taking all the line breaks out and, and kind of like the formatting and then just putting it all in one line. Um, so a lot of times uh, web applications will do that to save space because um, you can have like hundreds of thousands of lines of code um, and then all those breaks and everything adds additional size to the file. So uh, making it minified uh, reduces the size of the file so that the application will be faster to load because it's not downloading such a huge file. All right, uh, let's see what else you have. Format and sort. So you can uh, sort stuff. You can format pretty print, um, which is what we're going to be using uh, the most. And all right, so now you have pretty JSON installed and you are ready to start using it. Okay, we're going to be learning how to use the JSON validator from Pretty JSON. So I know we haven't gone over the lesson on how to read and write JSON yet, but bear with me um, because once we start doing that, then it'll be a lot easier because we have this utility. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write a bit of JSON here. So what did I do last time? Last name, Joe. First name, oops, somebody. All right, so if I have this in here, I'm going to do a few things right now. So Control Shift P, 
I'm going to type in JSON. I'm going to set the syntax to JSON. So um, right now I haven't saved the file, so it doesn't know what kind of file it is. Um, if you save it, I believe that it automatically sets the syntax. Let me let me double check that real fast. So, gonna... paste, and then if I save this, let's just put it on the desktop. If I save it. And then it knows it's a JSON file now. So, yep, it knows that it's a JSON file. So you see this pink? Um, it's it's kind of giving you a color indication that you're doing something weird. Um, so you can see. There we go. All right. So you can either set syntax manually, or if you save the file as that type, then it'll automatically do it for you. Um, so let's let me close this because I don't need this anymore. All right, um, so Control Shift P, type in JSON again. So we're going to want find the one that says JS, pretty JSON validate. And then you're going to get this little window that says JSON is valid. OK, so let me start making it invalid. So you can see there's no color warnings right now, um, like it showed you a second ago. But you can see that now when you do the, the JSON validator, so let me do that one more time, Control Shift P pretty JSON validate and now it says invalid JSON and you can see that now it has highlighted something right so this something that it highlighted is not the actual error the error is that I put a comma here and there shouldn't be a comma there uh, but it's giving you like an indication of about where the failure happened all right so if I move this the highlight is still there but once you do the control shift P and pretty JSON validate again, it will go away and now it says the JSON is valid. All right, let's try something else. So this is a lot of pink. And then you can see that invalid JSON. And then this time it did actually highlight the whole section. And so you have an idea of where to look for um, why your JSON is invalid. Um, all right, and then let me try some other things. I changed it to that, and now it's valid again. Um, and then you'll learn all about this in the upcoming lessons. All right, JSON is valid again. And then let me just change that back. And let me show you a few things here. So I made a couple errors in here, and now I'm going to do a Control Shift P, validate JSON, and now you can see that what is being highlighted. So the thing that has the box around it is now the first spot where it thinks the error is. It's not catching that there's an error down here yet. It's catching that there's an error up here, and you see that the syntax highlighting um, is highlighting this uh, colon up here. Um, so it's kind of giving you, you have to kind of understand the errors. Um, you'll get used to it after after uh, playing with it for a while. Um, but uh, sometimes the errors point you exactly where you need to go, and sometimes they kind of uh, take a best guess. So if I put a comma in there, then that syntax highlight will go away. But then um, the other one is still there because that's needs to be validated again. Now it's it's validating down there. So um, yeah. So that's a quick overview of uh, JSON validation. Um, you'll be using this quite a lot when we start our uh, JSON data lessons. Okay. So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about formatting JSON. So I briefly showed you the different kind of formats that we do. So if you do a Control Shift P and type in pretty JSON, you can see that there's a minify, format and sort, and then pretty print. Um, we're going to do the minify and pretty print ones for right now. Um, so let me exit out of there. 
Um, oops, looks like I made a typo here. Sample. All right. So right now, before I format anything, I'm going to do Command Shift P and then type in JSON. I'm going to do a validate. It says invalid because we still haven't fixed this. So I'm going to put some quote, double quotes around it, and then fix it. Validate. So now we are valid. So let me show you what happens if you try to format invalid JSON. So if I do Control Shift P, and then type JSON, and then I'm going to do minify. Now it's going to validate it. So before it formats it, it automatically validates it. So it, you can see that it put the put the outline around the the, the sample line there. I'm going to do fix this one more time, put double quotes around it, control shift P, JSON, and then minify. And now you can see that the formatting has changed. So this is what I was talking about as minified. So it took away all the, all the line breaks, all the indents, um, and pretty much all the spaces. So you can see that there's no, no longer spaces after these things. There's no space after the, the semicolon and so on. So it's harder to read. So right now this one is not too hard to read um, because there's only a few things, but imagine that this had uh, 40 or 50 different things in it and then it would just be like a multiple, it would be a long wrapping single line of text. So it's, it's kind of like, imagine if you had a book and the whole chapter was written um, without any spaces in it it would be very difficult to read the chapter. So um, this is what Minify does. But as I explained before, Minify is has a purpose um, since Minify is not meant for um, people to read it. Minify is meant for the computer to read it. Um, basically, um, usually the web browser or the web application to read it. Um, and then the Minify is to save um, space from, from the file size. All right. So let's make this look nicer. Um, so do Control Shift P, and then we're going to choose the format Pretty Print one this time. And now you can see that this is a lot nicer and more readable. So you can see that there's line breaks, there's indents, and then there's spaces here, and then um, everything is very easy to read. Um, so this is what we're going to be using. So I'm going to switch it back for fast to minify. So a lot of times when we're looking at stuff that comes from the web, um, the API is going to give it to us in a minified version. All right, so we're going to have to take that and um, do our control shift P and then format and so that we can uh, easily look at it and understand what's going on. And when you're working with like developers and you have a piece of JSON, you usually want to give them this prettier version of it um, so that they don't have to uh, unminify it themselves um, and it just kind of makes it easier for everybody to see what's going on in, in this kind of a layout. Hello and welcome to my new course. It is called the QA Guide to REST API Testing for Beginners. In this course you're going to learn a lot about APIs, how they work, how to test them, and all sorts of things. So let's take a quick look at the content here. So um, we have a quick introductory section and followed by API basics. Well, you're, you will learn how APIs work and what how they are composed. Moving on down, uh, we're going to learn a bit, little bit about working with uh, JSON data using the Sublime Text tool. So you'll learn how to validate and format data quickly and easily so that it becomes readable. The next section is going to go over uh, JavaScript and JSON data. So you're going to learn some JavaScript which is required for you to understand how to create and manipulate JSON data. And the bulk of the course is going to be in the next few sections here. So you're going to learn how to use the Postman tool to create requests. So you're going to be able to create all the different kinds of requests and we're going to use a few open APIs to test with. And following that, uh, we're going to have a section on Postman testing. So we will create test cases for 
the API request that you created in the previous section, and I will show you how to create tests that will run automatically every time you make a request. All right, and we'll do a quick section on using the developer tools to view requests that come from the browser, followed by one of my favorite tools, uh, Fiddler. So Fiddler is a proxy tool that allows you to capture traffic that's going through your computer. So we're going to use this to be able to see and manipulate traffic that's going through your computer. And it's a very handy tool for testing. All right. And then we'll just wrap it up from there and you'll be good to go. All right. So I hope you take this course and enjoy it. And it is a very valuable piece of your arsenal if you are going to be a QA tester, especially if you want to be more of a full stack kind of tester, testing from the from the bottom up. Um, this is one of the core pieces that you will need.